In the limestone valleys of southern Europe, beneath layers of sediment, ice, and time itself, lie the remains of a people who were once our closest kin. For more than 150 years, Neanderthals have lived in the shadow of our own story, cast alternately as brutish cavemen or tragic evolutionary failures, relics of a dead-end branch. But today, their bones are no longer silent. Ancient DNA has begun to speak, and what it is revealing is forcing scientists to rethink everything they thought they knew about where Neanderthals truly came from. For decades, their origin has been one of paleoanthropology's greatest mysteries. Neanderthal fossils stretch across an enormous range, from the caves of Spain and France to the plains of Central Asia and the mountains of Siberia, dating back hundreds of thousands of years. Yet while their bones told us where they lived, their genes hinted at a story far older and far more complex than a simple European origin. Now, an international team of geneticists and paleoanthropologists has pieced together one of the most comprehensive Neanderthal genetic studies ever attempted, analyzing ancient DNA from fossils found across Eurasia from Vindija Cave in Croatia to the remote Altai Mountains of southern Siberia, the team uncovered a hidden history written in their cells, a history shaped by climate upheaval, migration, and repeated encounters with other ancient humans. Neanderthals were not an isolated offshoot. Around 600,000 years ago, they diverged from a common ancestor shared with modern humans, likely Homo heidelbergensis, somewhere in Africa or Eurasia. But pinpointing where Neanderthals themselves first emerged has long remained elusive, until now. By examining both nuclear DNA and mitochondrial DNA passed down through maternal lines extracted from bones and teeth preserved in permafrost-like conditions, researchers compared Neanderthal genomes to hundreds of ancient and modern human sequences worldwide. What they found was unexpected. The earliest Neanderthals carried genetic traces of an even older population, one with roots far to the east, possibly in Central or East Asia, long before Neanderthals became a defining presence in Ice Age Europe. One of the most revealing discoveries came from the Altai Neanderthal, a female who lived more than 120,000 years ago. Her DNA showed clear evidence of interbreeding with another mysterious human group, the Denisovans. This was no isolated encounter. It revealed that Neanderthal history was not a straight evolutionary line, but a braided river, full of branching paths, reconnections, and genetic exchanges stretching deep into prehistory. The data also revealed something equally profound. Not all Neanderthals were the same. Early Western Neanderthals, such as those from Spain's Cima de los Huesos site, dated to more than 430,000 years ago, carried genetic profiles distinct from their eastern counterparts. This suggests that Europe may have seen multiple waves of Neanderthal populations arriving, mixing, replacing, and sometimes coexisting over hundreds of thousands of years. So what drove these movements across continents? Climate appears to have been a powerful force. Ice Age Eurasia was a land in constant flux. Advancing glaciers pushed populations south into refuges. Warming interglacial periods pulled them north again into newly habitable landscapes. These cycles may have repeatedly brought distant populations into contact, Neanderthals, Denisovans, and even early relatives of modern humans far earlier than previously believed. The genetic evidence revealed another surprise. Small but significant traces of DNA from an even more ancient hominin, possibly Homo erectus, were detected within Neanderthal genomes. This suggests deep ancestral roots in Asia before their expansion westward. In other words, Neanderthals may not have originated in a single place at all. 
their birthplace may have been a vast, interconnected range spanning thousands of miles. Far from being slow-moving, isolated survivors, Neanderthals emerge instead as adaptable travelers shaped by migration, innovation, and survival across some of the harshest environments humans have ever known. And one site, long debated by archaeologists, became a critical piece of this puzzle. Mesmaiskaya Cave, high in the Caucasus Mountains. Here, in a rugged corridor between Europe and Asia, researchers uncovered the remains of a Neanderthal child who lived more than 40,000 years ago. Her fragile bones carried genetic echoes unlike those of Western European Neanderthals. Her DNA linked her to populations much farther east, mirroring ancestry seen in the Altai Neanderthal. The Caucasus, it seems, was not a boundary, it was a bridge, a crossroads where Ice Age populations met, mixed, and moved between continents. The timeline revealed by these genomes is staggering. Between roughly 100,000 and 60,000 years ago, Neanderthal populations expanded and re-expanded across Eurasia multiple times. Each movement left subtle genetic signatures, like footnotes in a book humanity never knew existed. And with each movement came encounters, including encounters with us. This matters because the story of Neanderthals is inseparable from the story of modern humans. Every non-African person alive today carries, on average, 1 to 2 percent Neanderthal DNA, a genetic inheritance born from ancient interbreeding, some of it in the Middle East, others possibly much farther east as modern humans began leaving Africa around 60,000 years ago but the new genetic evidence pushes some of these contacts far deeper into the past. Certain Neanderthal lineages appear to have received genes from early relatives of modern humans more than 200,000 years ago, long before our species' great migration. This was not a single meeting. It was a long, complicated relationship marked by separation, reconnection, and shared survival. So why did Neanderthals disappear around 40,000 years ago? DNA offers part of the answer. Toward the end of their existence, Neanderthal populations became small and fragmented. Inbreeding increased. Genetic diversity declined. This left them more vulnerable to disease, environmental stress, and sudden change. At the same time, modern humans with larger social networks, wider trade routes, and more flexible technologies expanded rapidly into Neanderthal territories. Yet the genetic record makes one truth undeniable. Neanderthals did not simply vanish. They live on, woven into us. Their genes still influence how our immune systems respond to illness, how our bodies process fat, how our skin reacts to sunlight. In a very real sense, they never fully disappeared. As ancient DNA technology advances, researchers are now finding Neanderthal traces in places once thought impossible, within cave sediments without visible bones, on stone tools carrying microscopic residues, even in the hardened plaque of fossilized teeth. With every discovery, the picture grows clearer. The origin of Neanderthals is not a single point on a map. It is a network of journeys, exchanges, and adaptations spanning continents and hundreds of thousands of years. It is the story of a people shaped by ice and movement, by encounters with other humans, and by memories of places thousands of miles apart. And as that story comes into focus, one truth becomes impossible to ignore. To understand Neanderthals is to understand ourselves, because in every strand of our DNA there are echoes of their struggles, their endurance, and their triumphs. They walked landscapes that would break most of us, hunted in cold so lethal it could kill within minutes, gathered around fires that flickered against stone walls, sharing food, perhaps stories, perhaps songs we will never hear. 
and still they adapted. When we trace their story, we are not just uncovering the past, we are recovering the missing chapters of our own.